welcome to Qatar Airways 787. Uh, I'm in business class in row five, and this is actually the inaugural flight from London Gatwick to Doha. But a slightly late takeoff, uh, but that's no fault of Qatar's or Gatwick's. It's due to a strike in France. But now we're on our way, and we've got a day flight about six and a half hours, and land in Doha somewhere around midnight. Um, Thanks for all your comments on previous reviews. Uh, very warmly appreciated all the feedback. Uh, particularly like the fact that people say that I'm really, really dull. So um, I'm going to try and liven this one up a bit. Apparently, one of the things that you really need is a baseball cap. Except maybe not worn that way. Maybe this is what will make the difference and make this a more fun review. Plus a few fake smiles. Meantime, Let's tell you about the flight. Um, the Qatar's had the 787 for quite a while. Um, this is a new flight. Um, it's uh, going double daily on Gatwick from today, which is May 22nd. Uh, there's some talk about whether it's actually going to uh, stick around beyond October. We'll find out uh, later. But in the meantime, it's worthwhile having a look at the 787, particularly in business class, because it has a fantastic we're about to take seats because of turbulence, it has a fantastic layout of one, two, one, and there's um, five rows. Um, as I say, I'm in row five, and I'll show you around the cabin when this turbulence ends. One of the uh, astonishing things that they have on this Qatar Airways flight is this large area by the door that includes not only kind of magazines, and then, of course, how we came in, but then on the other side, which is where the main cabin is, main cabin for business class. This table, where you can, I guess, stretch your legs, have some fruit, or have some snacks. The layout of the cabin, as you can see, is, is very um, spacious. You've got a one-to-one -one configuration. There are only five rows of four seats here and then two seats behind, so it's a total of 22 seats. It's very, very comfortable. You can tell from the darker windows there that people have got control over the windows. You just press a button and the window darkens for those people who want to watch uh, the in-flight entertainment or maybe get some sleep. I mean, this is a day flight, so it's not too dark. And you can also see the mood lighting that the 787 enables. The seat has got lots of room. Um, I'm in a centre seat here, 5F, and although I've made a complete mess of it and I've pulled the table partly out, you can see how much room I've got. Uh, the table will fold out even further. Let me show you that firstly. So you'd have it in that position for dining, I guess then it will also get completely out of the way. There's plenty of storage. You can see just down there, there's the power where I've got um, my laptop plugged into, and there's some storage there. There's also storage here. I think a few people missed this, but um, there's a place for shoes just here. more space here. That's uh, obviously for water bottle and headphones. And then you've got room for magazines and all the mess that I've put on the side table. There's a reading light and uh, extra power there for a USB. Those are the seat controls. It's a very easy seat to control. So what's so special about Qatar Airways business class? Well, uh, on the 787 and the A350 is fairly similar. The first thing is the amount of space you get. You're talking one to one across the aircraft. That gives you a huge amount of space. 
The second thing is the service. Uh, it's absolutely superb. Um, just on a short delay, we were asked several times whether there's anything they could do that kept refilling drinks. Um, everything was done to make the delay as, as pleasurable as possible. Thirdly, there's the actual product itself. Um, there's the seat, how much room you get. It's fully flatbed and the amount of space for working. You've got power. You've even got Wi-Fi on board and you get the first eight megabytes of Wi-Fi for free. Um, and then you've got the food and the drink. This is the drinks menu. First of all, champagne. Uh, we've got Pomeray, um, Drapier Brut Rosé. And then moving on to the white wines, Burgundy is an Albert Bichot Gris Fuisse 2015. Sauvignon Blanc is a Villa Maria from New Zealand. So that's Cellar Selection 2016 Marlborough. The Discovery, which would be a pleasant thing to discover, would be the Chenin Blanc from South Africa, Swartland, Bushvine 2016. And then the Bordeaux is Chateau Lynch Moussas, a Grand Cru Classe Guillac 2012. Let's just see what's. It's normally a really good port. Oh no, there's more. Um, Shiraz, Killerman's Run, Clare Valley, Australia, 2015. And then the discovery here is the Terre del Grico Primitivo 2012, Italy. My goodness me. And then there's a dessert wine, Alviar, Pedro Zimenez, Solera, 1927. And then the port, which is Grand Cruz Porto, 1992 Dora Valley, Portugal. And then you've got the spirits, Glenfiddich, Glenfiddich, I've been told to say, uh, Chivas Regal, Jack Daniels, Belvedere Vodka, Bombay Sapphire, Gin and Bacardi, Carta Blanca White Rum. Beers at Peroni, Heineken, Her Garden, and then of course some cocktails. So this is the um, special menu. Obviously this is just for um, the inaugural of London Gatwick. <laughs> See here, a la carte menu. Hopefully that's in focus. Um, soup, roasted butternut squash soup, appetizers, Arabic medzi and smoked tenderloin of salmon, mains, Chicken match boost, please excuse my pronunciation. Char grill, fillet beef, and paneer tikka, tikka masala. And then there's a selection of breads, desserts, and some light options for this. Uh, it's a day flight, obviously, landing quite late, nearly midnight with the time difference. And that's the um, basic beverage menu. So they've got uh, alcohol-free bubbly, some mocktails and some cold beverages and then teas and coffees. They've got everything that you would want and expect in uh, business class. There are only 22 business class seats in this cabin. The two to avoid are actually there, just on the other side. Um, they're normally used for crew rest, I think. Um, but the main cabin here is five rows of one, two, one. So it's very exclusive and you get a lot of personal attention. I mean, right now, just looking down the cabin, there are three flight attendants coming around serving drinks and uh, serving the appetizers for the food. It is fairly amazing. So that is the salmon and wasabi amuse bouche. This is the Arabic meze. We're just beginning our descent into Doha. Flight's gone quite quickly actually, it's been um, five and a half, six hours. Been very good flight, uh, very good food and wine. The staff have been fantastic, always up and down the aisles asking if we need anything more during the flight. Uh, there's enough room on this flight that you can work right the way through um, and power all your devices or you can get some sleep. Uh, people have done both or they've just watched the um, in-flight entertainment, so good choice there. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how this business class, which is one of the best flying, compares with the new Qatar Airways business class, which is the business suite on the A350-1000. I'm flying that back from, back from Doha um, tomorrow. Um, in the meantime, uh, that's the end of this one. I hope you found it useful um, and got some guidance on the cabin. And um, any, any comments, please put them on the, the bottom of this uh, YouTube channel. And of course, subscribe. Thanks so much.